Hey guys, Rob Skiba here for another Seed Behind the Scenes video. This time I'm going to introduce you to the visual effects team that Hilton has put together at his company Synergistics. Uh, this group of very talented artists are literally bringing Seed to life. And I have to say it was very exciting for me to see that. Um, they are doing just an amazing job. So I am excited to show you what they're doing. Check it out. So it was about seven years almost to the day ago yeah. that wow. you brought me to this same place. This Back full circle. What was the name of the studio at that time? It was Waterfront Studios. Waterfront Studios. Yes, and now it's called Silver Line Studios and Refinery, but it's a few different production companies using it now. Using the same facility? Yeah, so Refinery, Silver Line Studios. And right over there, there's a sign called Cedar. Look at that right there. And we're sitting here at Synergistics. I'm with Matthew Kearney. And uh, Matthew, tell us a little bit about what you guys are working on here behind us. We are working on seed. Uh, we're generating uh, layout, trees, uh, the river. Um, we've been modeling the Avenger, getting all the turret uh, bits inside. A lot of the interior detail has been added, UVing, uh, preparing it for texturing and look dev. We're uh, preparing the Avenger to be the crashed version as well, so that we can very much art direct once the plane is crashed, what the look of it is, uh, making sure that the bullet holes will hold up when your camera is very close to the aircraft, uh, and setting up uh, the river simulation so that we can have high detail simulation around the aircraft and where the characters are, and then the lower areas simulation happening further from the aircraft. Uh, we're preparing the, the lighting so that we can uh, accurately change the lighting from the golden hour, that amazing sunset, through to the darkness. Right. Uh, and then obviously craft the lighting so that when it is dark, you don't lose too much detail. Mm. That there perhaps there's some moonlight uh, uh, enough to just have good cues for what's going on. Yeah. Um, so we're, pre we're preparing mostly uh, a lot of the, the scenery, the crash site. Uh, we're getting everything in place so that once the animation starts full ball, we can, we can go full tilt with everything. Uh, put the characters in the scenes and they'll be dressed and ready to go. Closest to the window is Mara, who's an asset team, so he's modeling, texturing. He does a bit of uh, look dev as well, creating shaders and uh, text uh, lighting the objects. Uh, he's busy working on the Avenger at the moment. Uh, he's, a, he's the lead on the Avenger. And he's collected a ton of reference so that we're doing it uh, so it's done right. So uh -huh. it, it matches what was, was done at that time. Uh, next to him are Adrian and Lee, and uh, Lee's busy working on the bullet system so that we can completely art direct where the bullet hits mm. uh, happen, uh, how many bullets are fired, the length of the traces, how, how, how often you see the traces. Mm. And we'll be adding a little system to texture bomb where the bullet hits happen so that you see varying sort of detail of types of bullet holes, uh, the damage around the bullet holes. We want it to be, when you get close up, that you see that detail. And we want it to be procedural as well, so that you can art direct it to your heart's content. Right, so you're saying we can create a path, whatever direction we want exactly. the bullets to go in. So on a shot-by-shot -shot basis, we can draw a path mm -hmm. and determine how fast the bullets move across that path. How many points there on the path will be where the bullet hits happen on that path. So. Yes. It's a nice system. And then behind there is Tammy. She's working on the, uh, the terrain. Mm. So she generated from open source uh, uh, height maps, mm. from Google Earth data, we, we, we've accurately modeled the crash site in the Solomon Islands. Yeah. Uh, so it, it, it mm. is true to um, what is currently there. Um, so we'll have various uh, levels of detail. So when you're at the crash site, we've got a very high detail, very high res section. But when the plane is further out, we've got sort of the LOD um, variation so that when you're quite high up, you still have the full Solomon Islands, which are mm. generated from terrain data. So it's all accurate. It's, it's mm. all the actual island shape and the, the right height of mountains, etc. That's fantastic. Yeah. And thanks to Houdini, we were able to do that. I must say. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Allegra is busy working on some of the color scripts, uh, the matte painting of the um, panorama of the, the sunset from the aircraft in, in the sky. And we'll obviously work out with you the varying levels of lighting from where the sun starts to where 
it dips down behind the horizon and, and gets dark. Yeah. And we want that to be directable as well, as, as much as art directable as possible. Mm. And then the other Matthew is handling all the, the fluid sims at the moment, setting it up, making sure that we're at the right scale so that the sims, are, the sim scale is accurate so that we get a, a reliable result from the simulations. Mm. And then like the river movement and all that kind and of stuff. And any water interaction. <coughs> and obviously for when the plane crashes, that's a big yeah. one. That's the, that's the money shot right there. That is the money when, shot. Because that plane is going to crash like an inch in front of the camera. It's going to splash water. <laughs> and that'll make for an, a nice cut to the next shot as well. Right. Yeah, yeah. And then we're obviously uh, also having to set up the pyrosim. So once the plane has crashed and it's starting to catch the light, Fire. And we, that's also quite nicely directable because Houdini has an option for spreading pyro fire. So nice. it'll start out small and it, yeah, by the time he way. gets away from the plane, it'll be well on fire <laughs> for the explosion indeed. And then next to him is Ruan, who's the zebra sculptor, who's at the moment sculpting the detail on the Japanese soldiers. Mm -hmm. And we're going off the reference that you supplied and a, yeah. a few other references we found as well. So they w will hopefully be very accurate for that period as well. Very nice. So what's the uh, pipeline of software that you're using specifically for this project? Uh, at the moment we're Windows based uh, and we obviously use ZBrush for modeling, uh, Substance Painter for texturing and Mari for texturing. Mm -hmm. And Mari is great in that it handles very large uh, high detailed meshes. Um, then we use Maya as our intermediate uh, app for um, some modeling, uh, UVing, uh, and for rigging and animation. And then the app that handles the heavy load is Houdini. Mm. Uh, everything ends up in Houdini, it's our scene assembly. We do our lighting and look dev in that, all our effects, and when it comes to rendering, we push everything out through Houdini as well. Uh, and then at the end of the pipeline, we have Nuke for compositing and Flame for the finishing. Mm. So Nuke is great in, in that it's a, it's a workhorse. Uh, it's great for putting everything together and then with Flame, you've just got those few extra tools at the end for the polish. Mm. Um, and when you're delivering from Flame as well, you know that you're getting the highest quality uh, pixels you can get. I've been at Synergistic for two years, and uh, it's run by Hilton, who's been in this uh, industry for 30 years or more. Um, in fact, I think he was one of the people who started the very first visual effects house in South Africa. Oh, wow. He went on to um, help start the refinery, and then later Black Ginger, where I worked as well for nine years with Hilton there. Um, I'm CG supervisor, so I sort of run the studio, make sure the guys have the tools they need. I do some of the work as well. Um, and myself and Hilton are very excited to be working this because it, it's not often you get to do a, a full CG, mm. um, interesting and engaging story that has nice bits to do. So there's simulation, there's lots of look dev, um, there's the modeling of period accurate pieces. You know, it, it's the kind of job that the artists like to work on, mm. which uh, means that they they enjoy the work, so they they do it happily, <laughs> uh, and they do it well. And uh, and f from our side, it's nice to do because it, it's going to be a great piece for our showreel. It's going to be, it's going to look amazing. It's a good story, yeah. and I think it's going to generate a lot of interest. Yeah, all so right. We're excited. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> I'm excited too. Hey everybody, this is Rob. Hey guys, this is a team working on seed, huh? Look at that. Yeah. Awesome. And uh, we've got another five people joining us in January as well, so we are expanding. But this is, this is the Japanese team. uniforms yeah, exactly. here? Yeah, yeah this is the Oh, okay. very nice, dude. And holster, helmet, and little bits and rods. Yeah. Did you find some good reference material? Uh, yeah. I think it's what you sent us. The stuff I sent you was working? Yeah. Awesome. Well, I got and all then we've started scattering some trees and rocks and everything for the crash site just to start getting a, um, a, a hit on that sort of side of things. That's going to be quite the intense dressing that goes on there. So, so What software is that? It's Houdini. It's Houdini. Oh, that's Houdini. Yeah, yeah. And you're using ZBrush? Yeah. yeah. So this is an initial, just, just a rough test render, just to start oh, yeah, very nice. working on the lighting and the scattering of the trees, the bringing in rocks. The, so this is early stuff, but uh, it's, it's, you can see where it's heading. Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh yeah, And that was a paint over to, to just give us a better idea for lighting. Yeah, because the sun's 
pretty much like right on the horizon yeah, by, so by that time. There'll obviously be a bit of back and forth between us and you to yeah, get uh, the exact the lighting. lighting right. But uh, yeah, we're making headway there. Oh, uh, looks very good. Yeah. Yeah. That's just with the water volume cut off, we, we will obviously have the flowing river and stuff in there. Yeah. That's so your camera's like right there on the end. Yeah. Yeah. It's really tests on yeah. rendering and lighting. Yeah, and, and so while all the audio stuff is being finalized, we're just trying to get ahead of sure, as yeah. much as we yeah, can. Yeah, for sure. Because once the audio is done, obviously then the intensive animation stuff starts. Mm -hmm. So we'll be able to move the sun though, because the sun's changing yeah. the altitude throughout the sequence so the way I have the script right now is like the sun it, the environment gets progressively darker as the situation gets darker yes. um, you picked up on that yes like, absolutely yeah. as, the, as things get worse and worse it gets darker and darker you yes, know, which is nice in and real it, life it, you know also like it has that kind of um, when it gets darker uh, that feeling of your your, your stage almost produces inside and right it's much more intimate right which is a very nice way to sort of um, draw people into the story yeah. In fact, what I because I'm you see the whole thing is really fact-based fiction. So the more authentic I can be, the better. I'm gonna look and see what the actual moon phase was okay. on that day because I'm getting like timedate.com or whatever yes, yes, yes. and see if it was. Now, if it was invisible, we'll take creative license and make it visible. Yeah. But if it was visible, we'll make it, we'll make it the actual phase that okay, we can on do that, January 20th, uh, 1942. We 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 can even. Use our lighting system to um, put in that and date. Like oh uh, yeah, that latitude, and we can. Uh, oh yeah, uh, that we can drive the lighting. Fantastic. It will, it will be absolutely accurate. We might have to take some creative license to make it right. look better, but uh, right. at least we know we use So is everybody using Houdini? Uh, well, so Houdini is our is scene base? assembly and our, our effects and our lighting and our rendering package, and then Maya is also used for modeling Houdini animation. So uh, it's a combination, and uh, so from there has been exported to Maya uh -huh. for the reading and the animation side of things. Um, but that has been interesting. Uh, I, I wasn't aware that it's, it's pretty amazing software. Great. I mean, they use it for like Iron Man and yeah, stuff. Yeah. I mean, some of the bigger movies are actually using it for free software. It's, it's just crazy. crazy. This story has actually grown significantly bigger as a result of us working on this. Okay. The more I've tried to provide stuff for you guys, the more it's forced me to look into this whole yes. thing. Yes. And in real life, they're crashing here. And this is, would be like the northwest side of the island. Indeed, yes. There's a mountain range in front of them. Yes. And on the other side of that mountain range, apparently, according to this book called the Myst Solomon Island Sorry, Mysteries, yeah. okay. it was written in 2009, the same year I started working on Seed. Okay. <clears throat> Apparently there's a UFO base on the other side of that. <laughs> Interesting. And there are real life giants, a lot of them apparently, in that area that have been recorded for centuries yeah. in Solomon Islands. So I've, I've been doing like real life research of what's actually there, and now I've realized, oh my gosh, I got a huge storyline that can continue with my characters. You know, what happens to Lieutenant Kane, right? And the other Japanese soldiers. So there'll be a lot more happening in this story moving and it, forward. It, it, it definitely when that, that end scene when they go this way, yeah, it's, it's like what's gonna happen? Yeah, it definitely draws in and the, and that final scene of the scuba. Yeah, what's the, the device? Yeah. So yeah, it's an interesting story. Definitely. Thank you. So this you're doing. And then yeah, we've set up a, a, a leaf we're working on a bullet daily system, so that we can basically draw a curve and wherever the points on the curve that's, yeah, that's, that's where the bullets will hit. hit so we can so this is like modeled in dirt and we'll make it look like yeah, yeah, it's yeah. the metal yes definitely yeah. just, just so i can get the idea with the tutorial and all that get my focus on it yeah. and then apply it to the plane so it's the side of the plane and it's like there'll be sparks yeah, across the side of yeah. the yeah. 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 and wherever the bullet hits as well there's a system in houdini where we will it's called a uv texture bomb huh. of a like a maybe a a darker patch and then the bullet hole will be there ah. so that it just adds to the realism so it does leave a bullet hole there's some uh, paint chipped or whatever around oh, the nice. area so all that will be worked in and the nice thing about it is that it will be completely directable so, oh that's wonderful that's so fantastic. you can say oh, what if we have a few bullets hit over here yeah, yeah. and we can say sure we'll just put them yeah, over yeah. there yeah yeah so yeah it's, it's nice to have that kind of control and Procedural control, so we'd have to so reanimate stuff. Or so you can move that path in any direction. Yes, yeah. Actually, path. You can like secretly spell your name if you want to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then what's nice is because it's particle-driven, we can have um, 
like almost like tracers oh, yeah, 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 as well, yeah. so you can see the bullets. Oh yeah, there would be tracers probably every seventh round or so. Indeed, yeah. Are you doing this from scratch or did you use the so model? I started off with the model you had to do a lot of... Yeah, because you had to put the door and the windows and all the yeah, we, we found a lot of references, thankfully, Mara was able to find a very good turret references as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Google's your friend, huh? Yeah. And we will we'll take some license for the breach area so that you actually see the bullet jam. Um, and obviously, the inside is painted uh, green color, and the outside is painted uh, sky camera. So this, there'll be a cutout here. Okay. And that is where, uh, where the device. When we put a lever, so actually I didn't even, I don't know how they really open the bay doors in real life, but this would be a custom hatch here yeah. that the device is going to fall, <coughs> as we're looking at it, it falls this way. Yes, and then it's connected it's with wires to the to some kind, Yeah, it's like get creative, you know, come up with something cool. And it'll be a very nice for the moment without yeah. that like sort of auto. Yeah. And then maybe disconnect. And get that. Yeah. It'll be a nice little moment to yeah, that, those it gives wires it a sense of weight as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah. When, when those wires disconnect, yeah. the whip it around. And as it's falling as well, there'll be. Yeah. See, like, obviously, all these hatches and stuff are custom put in. Yeah. Everything on the head is almost different. You're doing this in Maya? Uh, yeah, in Maya. See the some hatches yeah. down here into the bomb bay as well. Yeah, that's like a little window that you can look into the bomb area. So the turret, you know, that's like I don't know what the full range of motion is, but it's it's pretty. I guess because yeah. he's sitting, he, it must be able to do like. From what I could wait, it's 176 degrees. Okay. So it's, it's quite that's quite good. intense. So yeah, that gets a lot of range of motion, and apparently depending on the crew that worked on it. They could modify some of the cables to, to get it even beyond what it would be in some instances. So, but so does the chair so stay stable? Oh, the whole thing stays like that. He sits so, in the chair that all and so his knees. I have another yeah. section here that pivots like yeah. this. Oh, and that I'll goes. Look at that. Oh, that's, 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 that is awesome. Yeah. Yeah. From what I can understand, the oh, yeah. 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 turn it in. Yeah. That is awesome. The, the airmen who flew the Avengers loved that turret because apparently it was, it was really, really amazing. The range of motion. Yeah. Just turn it for me again. Yeah, that, that replaced the Dauntless. Um, I don't know if you guys yeah. have seen, I don't know if it's come out here yet, the movie Midway. Has it come here? It's coming out at the end of this month. Yes, oh, yeah. you, you should, should, you should watch it. Because there'll be a ton of reference material yes. for you guys that think about for this when we Indeed. get into the animation part of it. And there's a very nice 2D. Um, Dogfight um, short that the guys that called Paths of Hate. I don't know if you've seen that. Uh -uh. It's between a Spitfire and a Messerschmitt. Oh. But it, it, it's, a, it's very nice for camera angle and um, to give you, it really draws you into the feeling of being in that sort of dogfight. So we'll run a lot of that stuff by you. Yeah, yeah, I've got something I could show you on uh, my Chromebook afterwards. Okay, I've downloaded uh, Amazon Prime has um, a whole series called Dogfights. Oh, wow. Okay. And there's several from this time period. From the, the Guadalcanal. Uh, yes. Oh, nice. That's the ventral gun right there. Yeah. That's the fifth gun. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, that back compartment's uh, quite cramped. It's quite cramped. <laughs> and from what I understand, that when they were fully loaded, those they were very heavy, and um, the pilots used to um, bitch a bit about when they were on a mission where they had to have a torpedo and the extra fuel tanks and the bomb bay. Yeah, because the bomb has been a big albatross trend. Absolutely. <laughs> but they're amazing aircraft. I mean, they're oh, it really is. really versatile. And they did a lot of different things. They had a lot of different roles. Uh, oh, you get some great references there. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. We, li we like to sort of maybe go a bit overboard on the references. No, good. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, key. I was trying to send you as much as I had at the time because when I was doing the comic book, and we just had a ton of stuff I had to send out for the comic books. Just from, you know, saying for the same reason. For, yeah. You guys got to go a lot deeper though than we had to go. We're probably going to go for this paint job. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, this, uh, like that, yeah. Maybe one. Yeah. It's got like With the, and the number is 003. Two trains, the blue, and then the white at the bottom. See it clearly. Yeah. 
So I can send you a model of the Zeek, the Zero, the Japanese Zero, yeah. also. We, uh, there was one uh, on Dez? Yeah, yeah, it already loaded. So it is, yeah, okay. Yeah, so I created a, that separate account. So okay. uh, and I've actually bought some more stuff since the last time. Okay. So if you use the, if you just open the install manager, it'll show you what's available, and you just select Fantastic. all, and it'll auto install them. Into okay. So Fantastic. You Thank you. I had a look at those, and there isn't much change that we need to do to them. Yeah, you shouldn't have to do a whole lot to yeah, that. Yeah, we're not getting inside. So yeah. Although I think we'll need a different paint job than the one that Daz comes with. Mm, okay. There's a B and things that's specific yeah. to the squadron. Well, uh, yeah, so, I mean, we can do it, but we'll just we'll find a way to set up and we'll, do, we'll paint that one up there. Yeah, the Guadalcanal uh, paint job was more of a green and had like these white, like chevron kind of things in front of the zero. Yeah. I think the Daz one comes with more of a, like a, kind of like this color. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they got a, the light brown. Yeah. 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 That's the good. Yeah, we may have to adjust the attitude of the airplane so that that's the only problem. We like to try to establish the scale as big as possible. Right. All the simulation and stuff will really scale dependent. Yeah. And, uh, and also, while the animation, the audio stuff is getting done, uh, uh, it's nice to just get as much of the stuff out as possible and to move ahead as, as quickly as possible as we can. <laughs> yeah, then um, we, we'll have Allegra paint up color scripts for most of the frames, in, which we'll send to you to view as well, which will just help us yeah. um, nail down the kind of lighting look as, as soon as possible as well. Yeah, and you said like this damage and all that's all customizable. Yes, so absolutely. We can yeah. Dial it down, dial it up. As we yeah, see. and we'll add obviously the, the the smoke stain across the front or oil right. um, streaks, and wherever the bullets are, the the, the little burnt patches and chip paint areas, oil yeah. area as well. So that on the shots where we're close and on the plane and where he's jumping into the wings, that'll all look mm -hmm. sort of nice and high res. Wait, do you guys don't have Max? No. <laughs> we had this whole discussion on the way here. <laughs> Take a look around the morning. This is all PC right here. <laughs> and uh, well, once we are in your office and we get all our infrastructure sort of built, actually we want to Linux. Just oh, yeah, because we were talking the, about Linux. Yeah, that's Linux. another level. Just for security and performance as well. Yeah. We've seen about a 20% performance improvement on Linux. And these apps are all running on Linux as well? All they all do, thankfully, yeah. except for Photoshop and ZBrush, but we'll have separate workstations for those. Mm. And uh, we're getting our render farm arriving early January, which is, uh, we will have 400 cores, which is nice. Wow. So. And another 12 workstations arriving. So, and then Allegra actually put together a very nice document for us on the floor of Fauna of the Solomon Islands. Oh, so that we're very good. finding the right. The right kind of plants. The right plants, the right trees. Uh, we, we, we're looking at pictures of what the banks of the river actually look like. So we want it to be as accurate as possible. That's great. Yeah. Who's working on the lizard? Uh, oh, Ruin as well. Oh, yeah? And ZBrush? Yeah. yeah. Have you got uh, the stink available? Uh, yeah. yeah. That's going to be a, a, a nice shot to, to light the lizard, actually. It, that, that, whole, that sequence just kind of pulls you out. Uh, it's just like, here's paradise, and all of a sudden, because it's, it's sort of simulating, okay, paradise is going to be totally trash. trash. You got the reference videos I sent with it too, right? Yes, we do. You just have to blend all the scales together. Uh -huh. And obviously add a little yeah. imperfections and detail. Sure. Yeah. So can you, sh just to give Rob an idea of the detail that you do, can you show him the crocodile? We've got some renders of the crocodile, uh -huh. captures of the crocodile. And we, nice. For another project, we did a crocodile and the. It's also needs to be well cast. Yeah, but we can show you that this, this is, Ruan is, is quite a, a detailed guy, so when it comes to the high detail stuff, he, he does it really well. Wow, look at that. Yeah, so that's the kind of stuff that's... That was for a different project. Yeah. yeah. This is for foam or the two. Nice. But it still needs another detail. Some of the stuff's too clean, so... You know, obviously, 
when, wow. you have, when you have enough detail in the mesh, when you add the texture on top, it just the yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so lines all this. Blend the color beads. And also, we want to look at a lot of reference into the once again for the. That's fantastic. Yeah, I think we were working with this. Though. Yeah, these are the two that I used actually. <laughs> <laughs> and I think we can't just get any notice there. Yeah, actually, they're really nice looking uh, creature. Oh, it's a, yeah, it's a very impressive creature. It's very friendly. Originally, I had it was a monkey. Okay. Uh, and I was just looking for a monkey of Solomon Islands, and of course, this is the monkey tail. So this popped up, and I'm like, oh, that's actually even more interesting. But what's nice is that it is unique to the Solomon Islands. Yeah, so it's don't hear it anywhere else. So. Yeah. We're adding all the rock detail, all the tree stumps, um, the little bits of plants and things uh, that we'll add. And, and, and because of the way Houdini works with instancing and all the rest <laughs> of that, you yeah. get a lot of variation and read so these. Yeah, yeah. Mm. yeah. That's fantastic. We're adding the photorealistic forms. So that'll be closer to what the face of that will have. That sort of radar. That's not a very. Okay, yeah. It's not a very high resolution picture. That's, that's great. That, but so there'd be a green glow from there. Yeah, a green glow, and then this would be a, like a slow of a humanoid person type thing. It might have something else going on in it, but that's to add to the. What is that? What are they scanning for? You know. Are they tracking something? Yeah. What are they tracking? What are they looking for? With the red light, the green light. Yeah, the green and the red light. Yeah. So he could be looking through. That could be like infrared. And then this is just kind of displaying data for what they're, whatever they're accumulating. And then run also. Oh, the screw down. Yeah, so we've got. Uh, I was trying to think that you know, you had already done this, so I was going to say Dad's already had something, but why not? Because we're never actually going to see them. Up uh, close, the, you know, they're yep. like like that last scene. Well, they'd be a little bit out of out of focus. Well, you, you're going to see the device first. Get that last page here. Uh, so you'll see you because this, and and I'm leaving the audience to wonder: is this immediately after, or is this like a decade later, or is this uh, when did they when is this being found and who's finding it? So the idea would be that you would kind of see that somewhat illuminated by whatever the ambient light is yeah. up, up above, and then you start seeing these lights at a distance, kind of maybe moving a little bit as, as they get closer. And then you then you know they become silhouetted by the ambient light above, yeah. and you realize that it's, it's dudes holding flashlights that illuminate the box. You know? yeah. So if if we do this right, the way the credits will roll. Oh, you know, because we fade the black after this last shot here, kind of a slow fade the black, credits start rolling, but as the credits are rolling, the black is slowly starting to open up to whatever the ambient light would be for, for this, and then you start seeing the other lights come that will illuminate it for the final, and then do we continue. A nice cliffhanger. Yeah. Seed is our effort to take all of my research over the past couple of decades and to put it into a mainstream television production that can literally reach millions of people. And this has only been made possible by our supporters over the years. And again, I can't thank you enough. You know who you are. Thank you, thank you, thank you. If you'd like to see this project continue beyond the teaser and you'd like to sow into Seed as well, you can do so by clicking the link in the description below. If you click on that link, it takes you to the main page of our website and there you can scroll down and you'll see right away there are several options for you to check out if you're, you're unfamiliar with the project and click on the seed development read the general overview if you'd like to read what happens after the teaser you can click on the PDF here and read the first script uh, in the series for free and if you missed the audio drama we did back in 2014 you can click on there you can click uh, to get on our email list check out our uh, previous seed updates and blogs to see our recent progress and uh, if you want to know about our research, you can click on that link right there. That will take you to our seed store where you'll see uh, right at the top here, I've got our um, the first four scripts of the series put together in a book and several different versions of it, sort of a basic version, a special edition version, and a limited collector's edition version, numbered and signed by me. And, of course, we got other seed merchandise you can check out there, and then you get to the section 
of the research behind the seed. If you want to know what seed's about, well, here you go. Uh, it's pretty much anything I've written about, done conferences about, talked about on my YouTube channel and radio shows, and all of those resources are available here on our seed website and various package deals that you could take advantage of if you so desire. Now, going back to the main page, keep scrolling down. There's a video, What is Seed? Talks. It's a video I did back in 2010 explaining the project. Other parts of the project, the comic book, the fiction novels, the video games, of course, the TV series, the goals, where we are in our fundraising, and finally get to where it says be a sower. This is how you can contribute to the project if you so desire. If you believe in what we're doing, then you can get behind us by clicking on any of these four links right here. If you want to pay by PayPal or credit card, you can click on option number one. If you'd rather send a check or money order, you can click option two. If you'd like to contribute with crypto, you can use option three. And if you want a tax deductible contribution, you can write off, you can click on option number four. Now, we are not a 501c3, but we are sort of underneath one as a subcontractor with Mountain Movers International. So if you click on that link, it takes you to the Mountain Movers PayPal account, and there you can make a contribution. Mountain Movers takes 8% and an admin fee, covers the credit card fees, as well as um, helps to support their ministry. So if you want to read more about what they do, you can go to mountainmovers.org see uh, what they're doing and 8% of your contribution goes towards helping them or about 5% after the credit cards get their cut and then the rest they send to us at the end of the month. So if you're looking for a tax deduction for the end of the year and you believe in what we're trying to do here, you can use option number four or if you just want to contribute another way, use one of the other three options. Either way, we thank you and uh, stay tuned for the next seed update coming soon. So it's a huge project, and hopefully what we're doing here will be used to raise the funds to, to go into production on the rest of the series. Yeah, yeah we'll put our best. Yeah, I know you will. You guys are already doing amazing work, so thank you so much.